February 16th, City Council meeting is called to order. We have our invocation by Reverend Q. E. Hammonds, pastor of Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, Pratt City, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilor Sheila Tyson, in District 6. Please stand. Let us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on our way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path, we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. Lord, we thank you for this day and allowing us to live in a land where we can freely call upon your name. I ask now, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would bless this city of Birmingham. Oh God, bless this council and bless our mayor and all of the civil servants that work to make our lives more livable. Forgive our sins. Keep us focused on thee. We pray for peace in our hearts, in our neighborhoods, and in our city. Lord, hear our prayer, for we pray in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen. Blue the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Council Member Abbott. Present. Council Member Hoyt. Present. Council Member Lundy. Council Member Parker. Morning, sir. President Pro Tem Rovers. Present. Council Member Rafferty. Council Member Scales. Good morning. Good morning. Council Member Tyson. President Austin. Present. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. The minutes are um, we have minutes from November 10th, 27th, and 24th. I can make, make a motion for approval, Mr. President. Been moved and probably second Abbott. Roberson Abbott. Okay, voting should be open. How would you like to vote, Councilor Tice? Thank you. Uh, that vote should be up, Mr. President. That item passes. Um, the minutes are not ready from December 1st through February 9th. Communication from the mayor. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. The Southern Museum of Flight is one of the many area attractions that the city of Birmingham is proud to showcase. Uh, we're excited that they are featuring uh, an exhibit on the uh, Tuskegee Airmen. Here to give us more information today is Director uh, Dr. Brian B uh, Barsani. Uh, Brian? Where's your assistant this morning? In school? Probably, he might be downstairs, as a matter of fact. His bus was running late, and he was supposed to meet me here. Okay. Yeah, actually, this was number two. Uh, I, had, I had a meeting with the mayor uh, last Friday, and I brought over one of our interns from uh, Holy Family, Holy Family uh, Christo Ray. And uh, he's one of our interns, and he uh, interns with us on Fridays as part of a high school internship program that we have. And he represents one end of the spectrum. He's a freshman. And uh, he uh, got to come downtown, come to City Hall here for the first time, meet the mayor. It was a great experience for him. And today, and he, he might be showing up soon, we have a, 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 an intern who is a senior. And uh, he was going to come down with me today. And, and, and what uh, I've done with my interns is something that's rather unique. Uh, they get to experience uh, a good bit of what we do at the mu museum as a business, as an organization, as a cultural arts institution. Um, so they come out of this internship rather well-rounded and take tangible skills with them that they can put on their resumes. So they're certainly making themselves more marketable when it comes to applying for um, colleges, scholarships, and uh, eventually uh, jobs. So uh, 
uh, I, I wanted to, to make mention of that, that not only do we have internships for college students, but we are getting them prepared before they even get to college by offering our high school students internships as well. And then specifically, uh, like the mayor had mentioned, uh, and, and I spoke uh, to everyone here a few weeks ago about an event that we have coming up, and I promised uh, during that presentation that I would have materials for you, press releases, all the pertinent information, and I have those uh, this morning, and I'll, I'll leave them with your respective administrative folks. Um, but that event is fast approaching, and that's going to be next week on Thursday, uh, February the 25th at 6 p.m. at the Southern Museum of Flight, and that's when we will officially unveil our Tuskegee Airmen uh, B-25 bomber. That's going to be a work in progress, and uh, we are going to work on this over the next year or so. And I mentioned that that day that I spoke what the impetus for this exhibit was, and uh, something I didn't mention, too, was thinking back. It actually came to fruition back in 2013 when we were celebrating 50 years forward and we got together with some of the other cultural arts organizations uh, in the community and uh, we figured out what we could do and what we could offer and what we could offer was uh, sort of telling the story of those who laid the groundwork before the folks who come along that we think of when we think of the modern civil rights movement who, who were blazing the trail in the early 1900s up and through the 1940s and then just beyond the World War II time period. And that's what this exhibit is going to do. It's going to tell the story of those gentlemen who, in the mid-1940s at Freeman Army Airfield, uh, essentially staged a sit-in, uh, defying a uh, commanding officer's order to keep uh, an officer's club on that particular uh, military post segregated. And it results in over a si uh, 160 arrests and three court martials. And then eventually these are overturned. And like I mentioned before, just a couple of years later, uh, the president will sign that executive order to desegregate the military. So I, I would certainly invite all of you to attend. I've left information with the, with the mayor's office, and I'll also leave information with each uh, uh, one of your respective administrative folks, uh, and, and you're all certainly invited to attend that night. Uh, we will also have the president of the Tuskegee chapter of Tuskegee Airmen Inc. here, Colonel uh, Roosevelt Lewis, U.S. Air Force, retired, uh, along with other Tuskegee Airmen who were there at that time. And uh, I'm really fortunate to have this opportunity. We had uh, some of the Tuskegee Airmen, about 12, attend our first exhibit unveiling back in 2008. And these gentlemen are, are, most of them are in their 90s now. And that entire World War II generation, when you think of it, even the youngest ones at the end of the war who were you know, 18, 19 years old are now in their 90s. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to have uh, this exhibit unveiling coming up shortly. This will also kick off our 50th anniversary at the museum. So. Uh, this, this exhibit serves as a testament to our, our museum, our mission, uh, our longevity as an organization, and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to once again come before you. Uh, I thanked um, Councilor Rafferty for uh, inviting me last time. I certainly thank the mayor for your invitation uh, this morning as well. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer them at this time. Go ahead, Councilor Rafferty. I'd like to know where you got the plane. Where we got the plane? Yeah. It, it came to us uh, by accident some, somewhat. We had gone to a, a museum that had shut down. It was on an Air Force base, and they were going through some restructuring and sort of reallocating their assets, and we, we went to find something completely different. We were on uh, the lookout for some other uh, uh, fighter jets from, say, the Vietnam era, and, and we sort of stumbled across this. And when we looked into its service history, we saw that it had served at Alabama in 1945 and 46. And then it's interesting, it actually returns to Birmingham specifically in the 50s to be retrofitted. Just down the street from the airport, we see the big hangars where the old Pemco plant used to be. So it had been to Alabama twice in its service life before it was eventually retired in the mid-1950s. And it's the only one that we know of that we can confirm that still exists that flew with that 477th bomber group that, that was instrumental in, in desegregating the services back in the 1940s. Great, thank you. Thank you for your question. All right. and, and, and Thank Brian, you all again. A, a lot of people knew that the um, Tuskegee Airmen who went on to fight in Europe flew the, uh, is it P-58? The P-51? P-51, but uh, many people don't know that they were also trained and flew the uh, B-25. That's well. right. I think, uh, you know, a lot of times the, the fighter pilots get the uh, attention, and deservedly so, especially with their service record. Certainly the movies helped, the HBO Tuskegee Airmen movie and then the Red, Red Tails movie produced you know, by George Lucas some years ago. Uh, but sometimes uh, the guys who flew the bombers get forgotten. Um, they, they don't get a chance to, say, defeat Nazi Germany in Europe during World War II, but they, they, they certainly are successful in, in defeating that social injustice that had you know, existed within the military uh, for so long. And then a few years later, 
1954 decision to des desegregate schools is going to come along. So it certainly provides that impetus for several you know, more court decisions that are going to be made over the years regarding civil rights. Thank Thanks, you, sir. Doc. Thank you all again. Appreciate it. The past few weeks have taken, uh, uh, we have taken the time to celebrate Bra Black History Month. We have paid tribute to our past, and now um, we will now take a look at our future. We have with us today students from Epic Elementary School uh, this morning to give us a brief black history presentation. You guys ready? Y'all come on up then. Thank you all so much. Could you come up and uh, let each uh, child introduce themselves or you introduce them? And also introduce yourself. Good morning, City Council. My Good name morning. is Jacqueline Dent. I'm a first grade teacher 
from Epic Elementary School. Let me say the amazing Epic Elementary School. And I came along with 22 brilliant first grade students, as well as my wonderful student teacher and my brilliant, amazing, supportive parents as well. And we wanna thank you all for yielding a few minutes of your meeting this morning to share with us and celebrate these beautiful and amazing children that I've brought along with me. So many times we hear about many negative things that are going on in our schools, but today we get to celebrate the wonderful things that are going on, and what better way than to hear from these 22 students. So as they give you their names, we're going to kind of exit out of the door so that you all can carry on with your meeting. And I'll start on this end. My name is Kendra Jackson. My name is Chloe Poole. My name is Chloe Kennedy. Chloe, wave at your mother up here, Chloe. Where, where are you, Jennifer? Okay. My name is Tyler Dawson. My name is Chauncey Nixon, and I'm seven years old. <laughs> My name is Caitlin Hicks. My name is Madison Brown. My name is James. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Cameron Coleman. <laughs> My name is Joshua Miller. <laughs> My name is Tyler Dillard. My name is Jabril. My name is Ethan. <coughs> My name is Tyler Hare. My name is Milo Love. My name is Amari. My name is Jemai. Jamia. My name, my name is Jaden. <laughs> my name is Jonathan Asuzu. My name is Sydney Coney. My name is Joshua Gentry. Thank you all so much and appreciate you bringing them down. <laughs> Take care now. Council is continuing with the theme of Black History Month. The Negro Southern League Museum will host a uh, pitch talk on Thursday, February 18th from um, 5.30 to 7 p.m. The event will be a panel discussion on baseball in Birmingham featuring Dr. Larry Powell, Professor of Communication Studies at UAB and author Jonathan Nelson. Oh, oh well, no, um, Dr. Powell is also an author. Then we have Jonathan Nelson. Most of you all know Jonathan from the Birmingham Barons. Uh, he's the general manager there. Then we have Ron Papa Jack Jackson, who will also participate. Uh, and Ron was a coach, I believe, with the Boston Red Sox mm -hmm. and a former player with the California Angels and, and uh, many others. So we look forward to hearing them uh, at the Negro uh, Museum, Baseball Museum. I want to thank all the counselors for the uh, kind resolution and uh, participation in my mother's homegoing services uh, this past Friday. Uh, your presence and your kind words uh, lifted my entire family up, so we're deeply appreciative of that. Uh, I'd like to ask Reverend Woods if you would come forward. Um, Bishop Woods would like to share with you all about a prayer breakfast that they're having. Thank you, giving obedience to the presence of the Lord, to our most honorable mayor, to this most honorable council, honorable brothers and sisters of the Lord. We're certainly happy to be here. And it goes without saying, we along with the council and employees here, uh, playing mightily for our mayor for his strength Thank and his you. family. A city united 
in prayer is the theme of a free prayer breakfast that SCLC is having this Saturday morning, 9 o'clock, at the St. Joseph Baptist Church, 500 Ninth Avenue North. My brother used to pastor that church. We have at least 20 pastors who have been assigned a subject to pray about two minutes. Met with them on several occasions so they won't be running over as if they're making a keynote. They'll be praying for the council, the mayor, education, just praying for different things. And our keynote speaker on prayer will be the pastor of that great church, Reverend Boykins Hunter. We have to pray with our eyes on God, not on the difficulties that we have. We got to look at God. And don't just focus too much on the difficulties. Uh, prayer changes things. It's a problem solver. It's an anxiety healer. And it certainly will change our hearts. Furthermore, Your Honor, we want you, everybody, to save this day. That's this Saturday morning now at 9 o'clock. Save this day. February the 29th, the last day of the month. SCLC will be having its annual meeting here. This is our local chapter. I'll be bringing my President's annual address, address, where do we go from here? To chaos our community. And I put a slash there. Sunshine in the clouds. I'll be giving you my vision and things that God has laid on my heart that we must do and we will do uh, during this particular year. Come out and meet local board members, register to vote. Sign up as a member of SCLC. Hear about the vision. You can become involved in more. Hear this. What is really at stake right now? It's up to us. God has left, chosen you. So we got to pray every day, see what is will for us. You somebody. God left here. Last but not least, Your Honor. I want to announce, if I may, the Keepers of the Dream Award. It's already been planned by SCLC. We've been working on this for a while. We have it every year. <clears throat> Keepers of the Dream. We have eight categories this year. Education Award, Criminal Justice Award, Community Service Award, Religious Award, Volunteer Award, the Rising Star Award, Human Rights Award, Youth Cultural Leadership and Civic Involvement. Recognize the youth group who demonstrates an intangible quality which uplifts their community and is engaged in various leadership and our civic activities in Hills Hill School community. Got to recognize the young folk who are coming up and push them. They may not have gotten all the way there yet, but they're, they're certainly on our way. And we want to thank you very much. Keep us in your prayers. Love one another. God has put us in this city. And we are certainly disappoint God if we don't love one another and pray for one another. What does God look, look like you, look like us, when we love one another? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. That's all I have at this time, counselors. All right. Do we have um, uh, any nominations of boards and agencies? No, sir. All right. Let's move on with the consideration of the consent agenda. Okay, the consent agenda starts on page two with item number two. Page three, we have items seven and eight on consent. Page four, we have items nine, 10, 11, and 12 on consent. Page five, we have items 13, 15, 16, and 17 on consent. Page six, we have items 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23 on consent. Page seven, we have items 24, 25, 26, 
and 27 on consent. Page 8, we have items 28, 29, 30, <clears throat> excuse me, and 31 on consent. On item 30, uh, first line it should be, I think that's uh, Mekinson, before Medical Surgical Incorporated, that's Mekinson before that. And then on the last line, well, one, two, three, third line up uh, after bid submitted, meeting specifications should be added there. Actually, it's the fourth line up from the bottom. Meeting specifications after bid submitted should be placed there. Page 9, items 32, 33, 34, and 35 are on consent. Then we skip over to page 12. We have items 43, 44, and 45 on consent. On page 13, we have item number 47 on consent, and I think we have one addendum item, 49. Yep. All right, do we have any council members? Mr. Protean? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on page three, uh, item, well, we need to keep that off, don't we? Okay. Uh, let's move on. Uh, page. Oh, yeah, we can't do that. Too. Too. Yeah. Um, page 10, item uh, 36. I have a question about that. Okay. If I can get an answer. Please, you go ahead, Councilor Hook. I want to read it off. Okay. Right. Uh, item 37. Yeah, I'll get to that. Item 39. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. 38. You want to put 38 on consent? Does anybody object to that while we're on that page? All right. I object. Mr. President. <laughs> yes. Uh, did we consider putting item 37 on page 10 on consent? Somebody objected to that, too. Okay. Um, and on page 11, item 41. Okay. And on page 12, item 42. You want to add item 41 and 42 to the consent agenda? Yeah, it's a miracle. You want to do item 40? No. <laughs> what about 49? No, no. Sorry. Don't push your luck here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any others wish to speak to the consent agenda? We have any members of the public wish to <coughs> speak to an item that has been placed on the consent agenda and marked as a public hearing? You may now approach the podium if there are any members of the public who wish to speak to an item that has been placed on the consent agenda and marked as a public hearing. All right. We're ready to vote, Mr. Clerk. We have a move in a second. Move the consent agenda. Second. Okay, voting should be open. Council member, Council member Scales. That vote should be up, Mr. President. That item passes. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Uh, that would be item one. Yes. Item one, an ordinance to further amend the zoning district map of the city of Birmingham, case number ZAC 2015-19, to change zone district boundaries from R3, single family district to B1, neighborhood business district filed by Ronald J. Moore, owner for the properties located at 3310 38th Place North and 3318 38th Place North, situated in the southeast quarter of Section 18, Township 17, South, 2 West, in the hearing of all ownership parties. We have a mover and a second. I move approval. Uh, second. Abbott, Parker. Um, I guess you're going to do it. Yeah. Councilor Abbott. Uh, Mr. Gambrell, would you read our case, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is ZAC 2015-19, the Eagle Nook neighborhood. 
and it is a request to rezone subject property from R3 single family residential to B1 neighborhood vista district to allow the use of a restaurant. The subject 0 .507 acre properties are located at 3310 and 3318 38th place north in the Inglenook neighborhood. North of the subject properties are mainly uh, single family homes, all of which that are zoned R3 single family district. South of the subject property is an Exxon service station, which is owned QB2, Qualified General Business District. East of the subject property is owned QR5, Qualified Multiple Dwelling District. And west of the subject property are commercial businesses, all of which are zoned CB2, Contingency General Business District. Um, Mr. Well, the applicant is requesting to have two parcels that are currently zoned R3, rezoned to B1, to be developed as a 2166 2, square foot Waffle House. Um, the applicant's proposal complies with the B1 zoning district regulations for a restaurant and proposed site plan shows 27 parking spaces uh, which meets the parking requirement for the site. Uh, the city's long range land use plan identifies the property for residential low. Therefore, the proposed re uh, rezoning is not consistent with the um, future land use plan. Uh, the Inglenook neighborhood met at its regular scheduled meeting on October 19, 2015 to review the proposed project. Uh, they voted 7 to 0 to approve. The neighborhood also requested the applicant represent to the neighborhood once they decided um, what would be exactly developed at the site. And they also requested queue conditions to be placed on the property that limit the use of the property to those in the B2 general district excluding the following gas station, convenience store, payday loan, package store, and dollar store. Uh, the Inglenook neighborhood met again at its next regular scheduled meeting on November 9, 2015, and reviewed uh, the actual proposed site plan for the Waffle House. Um, after that meeting, on advice of the planning staff prior to the ZAC meeting, the applicant amended their request to rezone from B2 to B1, since the B1 will allow the restaurant use. Um, the first zoning advisory committee meeting didn't meet on December 1st due to lack of quorum, but then they did meet on December 8, 2015 and voted to recommend approval of the applicant's request to change the current zoning of subject property from R3 to QB1 with the following conditions. And the first condition is submittal of a site plan. And the second was to exclude certain uses from B1, including gas station, convenience store, payday loan, package store, and dollar store. Um, the Planning and Zoning Committee of the City Council met a special call meeting on January 4, 2016. At the meeting, planning staff on recommendation from the legal department stated that it had been determined that the name of a particular business could be not excluded as part of a Q condition as stated in the ZAC resolution. Therefore, the planning staff recommended that the Planning and Zoning Committee should exclude general retail uses larger than 5,000 square feet. The Planning and Zoning Committee voted to recommend an approval of the applicant's request with the Q conditions listed below and asked staff to consult with the legal department, Inglenook neighborhood, and the applicant to verify that the language of the Q is satisfactory. Upon further review from all, it has been determined that the Q condition as approved by Planning and Zoning Committee is acceptable and therefore has been included in the ordinance as follows. Once again, the first one is for the site plan, and then the second condition is to exclude certain uses from the B1. Uh, including gas station, convenience store, payday store, package store, and general retail over 5,000 square feet. Thank you, Mr. Gambrell. Um, this is a public hearing. We're going to hear from the applicant first. Then we will hear from anyone in the, in the audience who wishes to ask questions or make comments or protest. Good morning, Council and Honorable Mayor. Uh, my name is Ronald J. Moore. Uh, it's a pretty tough act to follow these kids in uh, Reverend Woods. That was quite an quite a impressionable thing. Uh, I have with me uh, Brian Presnell is the engineer on this uh, project that we're doing. I have my son and partner, uh, Joe, and I have Evan Dejanovic, who is a realtor that has represented us on this uh, property and this development. Uh, we, uh, the property uh, consists, uh, some of, I know that uh, you know, was an abandoned house there. We have uh, 
uh, uh, remove that now. It's all been cleaned and uh, it, it, the property is ready to develop. Uh, we have been uh, trying to, to get this project off the ground for, soon, will soon be 11 months. So uh, I, I guess probably uh, would be in order just to, to answer any questions that any of you might have or, or any of the, uh, if anyone's in opposition to this. And this is a Waffle House, in case no one uh, realizes that yet. This is going to be a location of a new Waffle House. Does anyone have any questions um, from the council? Yeah. No names are up, so. My name is up. I put it up. I don't know why you don't see it. Oh. Your name popped up. <laughs> Councilor Scales. Yes. Uh, let me say this uh, up front. I was sharing with the <coughs> council member uh, for the district. Uh, the only concern that I have, honestly, is that there was a Waffle House that was in the area uh, right there along Tarrant um, in Tarrant City on 79. Um, and I just wanted to make sure we had queue conditions that speaks to the maintenance uh, and upkeep uh, both inside and out of this building. Uh, that was one of the problems that they had and I think ultimately may have been the reason why they closed. Um, can that be implemented, Madam Chair? Well, Q conditions are not for upkeep. They're for zoning related issues. Okay. So um, certainly the city uh, through code enforcement can talk with them about if there if there is an, a maintenance problem and certainly the applicants can talk about their plans for the facility well you know what then thank you counselor mr. Tim can you come up right quick uh -huh. is there anything that we can do that that um, even if I'm speaking incorrectly I welcome Waffle House I don't have a problem with that but, but what can we do so that that area maintains the dignity and certainly the comprehensive land use plan that we're trying to do to, to clean up some of our areas? Well, you know, the ordinance is going to require that they buffer the site. You know, the mm -hmm. rear of the site uh, adjoins residential property. Mm -hmm. And so the new, the new um, landscaping chapter and mm -hmm. the new zoning ordinance is going to require that they install a buffer there, okay. mm -hmm. a vegetative buffer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing that is going to be required of them from the start, and that's something that we included in the ordinance for just this reason. Just this okay. you know, so it's okay. you know, prescribed that they have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. I think the other stuff, like yes. the counselor had mentioned, you know, as far as you know, debris and, and pickup and stuff like that, you know, I think it's just incumbent upon the applicant to tidy the place up, and if you know issues persist, then you know court enforcement would have to deal with them. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Tan. So, sir, you are the applicant. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. In the few <clears throat> seconds that I have left, can I get you on record as committing to making sure that you keep this business clean, both inside and out? Meaning, and let me be very specific. When I say clean on the inside. You know what I mean. I, I, Certainly. I, I don't even want to sound uh, derogatory or sure. demeaning because that's not my point. I, I'm not familiar with the Waffle House that closed uh, yes, at sir. this point. Uh, I will soon uh, be uh, doing business in the city of Birmingham 62 years. Uh, my first peddler's license was in 1954, and I've never been cited uh, for any business that I've uh, had here. We have over 20 businesses currently that are in, uh, within the city limits of the city of Birmingham. Uh, the Waffle House Company, they have uh, uh, franchisees that will be operating these stores and, and the Waffle House, uh, is, they're very, very strict uh, on their uh, image and, and their, their uh, operations. Well, Madam Chair, uh, just a few more seconds if you don't mind, Madam. <coughs> is, so it sounds like you are the property owner. You are not a part of the management team. Is that, that what is it correct. is? That is correct. We own the property and develop it. I might go ahead and, and say we, the property directly across the street, well, first, the property adjoining this that the alley separates is an abandoned uh, shell store that has been closed for over probably 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also included in this. We've, there was a junkyard there. We've had that removed. 
that I didn't uh, allude to a moment ago. Mm -hmm. But that we've cleaned the, all of that up. Uh, we own the property across the street, which is seven acres, as you turn on Airport Boulevard that, uh, that the Exxon store is on and Exxon gas station. And this, this entire area has been uh, ex extremely depressed in the, in the, uh, there's been uh, transients that, that live in the woods there and we, the house that we tore down, we had to get the people out of the house to, to, to tear it down and clean it up. So we, we believe we'll be bringing the community uh, up by what we're uh, requesting you to approve. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Scales. Thank you, Madam Chief. Are there any other members of the council? Okay, uh, if y'all would have a seat on the front seat, are there any members of the public, anyone from the community who would like to come and speak, either pro or con, regarding this request or to ask questions? Seeing none. Mr. President, I believe we're ready to vote. Can you keep ready to vote, Ms. Clerk? It's with Q conditions, right? With, Q with conditions. the Q conditions. Voting should be up. Council Member Tyson. That vote should be up. That item passes. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Should be item three. Okay. And on its incorporating section 11 43 56, Code of Alabama 1975, management and control of finances and property of municipality, except as otherwise provided in the title, the council shall have the management and control of the finances and all the property, real and personal, belonging to the city or town. This is the first reading. Let me give you C. All right, we move over to second. For you, see. Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? No. All right, that fails. Next item. Item four an ordinance establishing the general fund and capital fund budget reporting process policy. Same on that item. We move in a second. Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. All right, we'll bring it up next week. Next item, Mr. Clerk. See me, item number five on page three. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with AT&T in the amount of $103,586.60 to install underground conduit at multiple locations throughout the city of Birmingham as specified in Amendment A of the contract. We have a mover in a second. Mr. President, move the item. Have a second. Roberson Parker. Have any questions about this item? All right, we're ready to vote. Okay. Mr. Clerk. Council Member Hart. That vote should be up. That item passes one abstention from Councilor Abbott. Next item. Should be item number six. A resolution authorizing the mayor to issue a firm commitment to the to allocate one million five hundred thousand dollars of the city's HUD Home Investment Partnership funds to the Housing Authority of Birmingham <laughs> District for the development of up to one hundred units of affordable housing in the North Titusville community, in support of the Housing Authority of Birmingham District application to the Alabama Housing Finance Authority for low-income housing tax credits, and if the project receives tax credits from AHFA in the 2016 funding round to disperse the $1,500,000 to the Housing Authority of Birmingham District for the city's home funds. Mr. President, I move approval. Second. All right, do we have any speakers? Ready to vote, Mr. Clerk. Okay. That vote should be up. That item passes one abstention from Councilor Hoyt. Next item. Item 14. A resolution appointing four members to the Birmingham Library Board for five years expiring December the 31st, 
2020. And I think that's Council Member Evans. All right. Move the item. Second. Roberson Abbott. Councilor Abbott. Uh, yes, we have um, four members. What the first is uh, John Scott Vowell. This is a reappointment. He served one term. This would be his second term. Uh, the next is Katrina M. Excuse me, Regina Ammon, Ph.D. She's replacing Katrina M. Watson, whose term expired on 12/31/15. Um, Eunice Johnson Rogers, who is replacing Sam Rumor Jr., term expired at the same date. And James A. Sullivan, who is replacing Patty Pilkerton, whose re term expired on that same date. So those are our four recommendations for appointment. All right. Do we have any other names that want to enter into the nomination? All right, we'll close on those. Mr. Mr. Oh. President. I'm sorry. Uh, Councilor Tyson and Councilor Scales. I have one. I would like to enter for from uh, District 6, have no representation on the board, and that's Willie Davis. His resume should be in front of you. We need to specify where, which, what, yeah, which term and, uh, the, um, and who, who would they replace? First the lady that she called out, uh, the first name. Was Regina Ammon? Regina Ammon. Ammon. Was the first lady. The first lady. The, the first one, yes, that one. So for that term, which expires December 31st? And we just have to take that one out. And you will have to vote on all of them individually. That's what we're yeah. going to do. <coughs> um, okay. Counselor, is that it, Counselor Tyson? Yes, that's it. Counselor Skills? Yes, uh, I have uh, Ms. Fatima Carter. Her uh, resume should be uh, at everyone's disposal. And uh, Sullivan is who I want to make sure, give, Ms. President, if, if the chair could give me, uh, it was, I think that was Sullivan that I heard that is currently on the board. I want to make sure. They read them out again, please. No, Sullivan is not currently on there. Vowel is, would be reappointed, and then we've got Regina Ammon, Eunice Johnson Rogers, and James A. Sullivan. Right. So Sullivan is currently on the board. No, no. He, he he would be appointed. These are the people who are being recommended for right. appointment. Right, and that's what and you said upon recommendation, Miss President, that we need to also say for what whose term that they are to replace. Is that right? That's right. And what we're going to do is we're going to vote on them individually. So. Um, We'll take. We'll just take the votes on the individual terms or appointments to those particular terms. I get you. And so when we get to, so the first one that we have is um, Scott Vowell. So we'll. Do we have any other names to be placed in the nomination? We'll close with those names. Then we have to vote on them individually. The first one is for the term expiring. Uh, it's for the reappointment of of Scott Vowell. <coughs> so. Okay, we didn't have any other person for the Scott Viles position, did we? No, so we just no. we can just do that one. <laughs> I can do that all and get it over with. Um, right. All in favor, Scott Viles. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed. All right. So that one passes. Mr. Viles will be appointed, reappointed. The next one would be for the for Katrina M. Watson. Um, her term expired. No, this is this yeah. Regina term, Ammon term yeah. is the person we're recommending. Yeah, but the term expired December 31st. That's who is currently there. Um, and the person that is on that one is Regina Ammon and um, the one that uh, Councilor Tyson recommended. And that would be, who was your name, Councilor Tyson? Willie Davis. Willie Davis. <clears throat> okay, what I'll do is <clears throat> call each counselor and they'll identify by the name of the person they like to appoint. Okay. Council Member Abbott. Regina Ammon. Council Member Hoyt. Davis. Davis. Council Member Parker. You would <laughs> say the name of Mr. Davis or Ammons, Regina Ammons. 
Or Did you say Davis? Yeah. Say something. Councilman. <laughs> Hold on, who are the other people? Pass on me. Let me go back to okay. see who's what. Um, Jalen got me. me Pro Tim Roberson. <laughs> Davis. Council Member Scales. Davis. Council Member Tyson. Okay. President Austin. Davis. Uh, Davis. Councilmember Parker. Uh, Davis. <coughs> okay. Po yes. Point of clarity. You go ahead. Mr. President, thank you. Who? Y'all got me a little confused up here with this <laughs> appointment process. He's not here. Oh, he just popped up. I'm sorry. Council London. Okay. Left you out. No I'm sorry. Go ahead. Davis. I didn't see him in there. Davis. Okay. So just so I understand, yes, the recommendation for the appointment <coughs> uh, from the committee was Hammond. Regina Ammon. Regina Ammon. And so Davis is being presented as an alternative yes. consideration. Yes. Well, on Council Roberson, um, I would like to change my yes. vote. Yes. Now that I understand the process for Ammon. Thank you. Okay, looks like we have two for. Um, All right. Um, Mr. Davis will be appointed okay. to that, that term. Next next yeah. person. All right. Go ahead. I think you got the list. I don't the next person is um, Eunice, Eunice Johnson Rogers, okay. replacing okay. Sam Rumor. Think that Rumor. Okay. All right. We, All in we, favor, we let it be known that. by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Any abstentions? All right. That person will be appointed. The next one. James A. Sullivan, replacing Patty Pilkerton. All right. And the other name was Fatima Carter. Fatima Carter. So we have to vote on those two. Mr. Okay. Councillor Abbott. Um, Sullivan. Councillor Hoyt. Sullivan. Council Member Lundy. Carter. Council Member Parker. Sullivan. Pro Tim Roberson. Sullivan. Council Member Scales. Carter. Council Member Tyson. Pro I mean, I'm President Austin. Carter. That uh, Miss Carter will be appointed. Uh, that's a four-four tie. Oh, <coughs> sorry. So we four-four. Yeah, I call so that. Neither one of those get appointed. It fails. The, the person that's currently there would stay, we'll stay on until, until, we, until we select someone else. Yeah. This is one of your constituents. She was serving on inspired terms, so I mean inspired terms. So. Okay. That was room, room more? No, Patty Pilkerton. Okay, I'm sorry. Right. All right, that fails. We'll come back to that one next. Okay. Week. Next item. Next item should be 36. A resolution approving payment to Cumulus Birmingham in Alabama in the amount of $5,000 to provide advertisement pursuant to section 11-47-9 and section 11-47-11 code of Alabama 1975 in according with section 3-1-7 the Birmingham City Code this being the sole source of supply you guys are amazing do we have a mover and a second Move item. We have a second. When the, all right. We don't have a second today. Oh, I'll second it. Abbott second. Roberson Abbott. We have Council Hoyt. Yeah. Just trying to understand what what kind of advertisement we're doing with uh, cumulus. Maybe nobody knows. Do we have anybody to answer the question? All right. Um, Councilor Hoyt, do you want to, would you want to move for a delay? 
Councillor, uh, all I can tell you is the invoice that was received said it was for the Birmingham Bowl, but I have no other information as far as exactly what the ad said. Okay. So there was an attachment? Yeah. I didn't find any. Do we want to delay? Come back to that. We can get yeah. it on <clears throat> yeah, just delay it until uh, we get it. Want to lay it on the table? Yeah. All right. There's made it on the table. Go ahead and made the motion scale second to lay it on the table. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed. All right. Item 37, then item 36, we lay it on the table. Okay, one second, please. Item 38, be next. A resolution approving payment to Master Solutions LLC, Birmingham, in the amount of $72,916 to provide governmental affairs consulting and lobbying over a seven month period, July 2015 to January 2016, with, in accordance with Section 3 1 7 of the Birmingham City Code. Move the item. Second. Go ahead, Abbott. Do we have any speakers? Ready to vote, Mr. Clerk. Voting should be open. That vote should be up. That item passes with one no vote. Um, next item. Should be item 39. A resolution approving payment to Summit Media LLC, Birmingham, in the amount of $21,720 to provide assorted radio advertisement in accordance with Section 3 1 7 of the Birmingham City Code, this being the sole source of supply. All right. Move the item. Second. Roberson Abbott. Yeah, Second. Councilor Abbott. Yeah, and I just wanted to ask um, how, what is this radio advertising for, and how in heaven's name is this the sole source of <laughs> supply? Because that's the way it was on the last one that we tabled. It said yeah. that the, the advertising was the sole source of supply, and I, mm. I can't understand that. And there were no attachments in our binder that I could find wow. that explained what this was. Counselor, the reason we say it's the only supply is because oftentimes they are wanting to target certain audiences, and there are certain radio stations, TV stations, whatever, that will only uh, that that are targeted to certain audiences within the city or the surrounding area so that is the reason we call it a sole source yeah you could probably advertise on any radio but if you if the people that you're trying to target do not listen to that radio station then the ad is fairly worthless so that's why we we deem it as a sole source now this particular one this 21 some odd thousand dollars was for a variety of ads on a variety of stations uh, for the Christmas tree lighting, the Magic City Classic, uh, Empowerment Week, uh, some more Birmingham Bowl. So this was a variety of ads on stations like uh, 610 Heaven, uh, 95.7 Jams, uh, 98.7 Kiss FM, uh, so those were the radio stations that these ads were on. Okay. Well, I understand now. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Scales. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Well, Councilor Abbott, it pays to know because I still don't understand because if that's mm -hmm. your demographic, WATV and JLD can reach the same audience. They play gospel and they reach the urban community. So. I, I don't understand myself. And I'm more interested in if, if we're uh, supposed to be paying for this, um, I see that there is a general account. What What is account is this coming out of? I'm sorry. Uh, counselor, that is coming out of the mayor's office marketing and promotions budget. Okay, but then let me ask you something. I'd be interested in knowing what was the commercial that was played? What was the content? I can't remember to tell you what that was. It was promoting those events, though. What events, Mr. Bernie? The events were the Birmingham Bowl, the Christmas Tree Lighting, uh, Empowerment Week, uh, and Magic City Classic. 
we paying something for the Magic City Classic out of this, Mr. Byrne? Uh, yes, ma'am, because is that in addition to the Magic City Classic budget that the council has already yeah. approved? Yes, it is. And the way that works, council, is that the, each department has its own departmental budget, and they're allowed to spend that budget on those things that are important to that particular department. And once we exceeded what we had uh, uh, had done with the Magic City Classic budget, we chose to further promote the event with our operating budget. And Mr. Byrne, <coughs> because I have the utmost respect for you, I appreciate you, but I'm gonna make one comment, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Byrne. I'm finished with you, Ms. Byrne. Okay. See, this is the kind of thing that I must admit, uh, Mr. President, that this is why certain council members keep talking about what the law department allows for us to do and not do, because with the law department, what we have been instructed is that if you appropriate a certain amount for a particular event or whatever the case may be, you can't go outside of what you have already appropriated. So I'm trying to figure out what law constitutes you being able to do this action that's before us today when you're working by the same principle that you say the council can't do. And I know because I bump into this all the time that if we go outside of whatever's been appropriated, whether it's through an outside uh, um, entity or wh whoever that we're dealing with to facilitate the process, if we go outside of that, we've been instructed by the law department that we can't do that. Well, I mean, I'd like for you to say it on record. I mean, if, if, if that be the case, because I'm telling you, that's what we've been instructed. So if that's not the case, please let me know so that the council can begin to do the same thing. Because all we want is for the good of the city. Whatever works for the entire city and whatever that law that constitutes us being able to do that today, we need to be able to have that same capability, Mr. President, to do that as this council. I have a question for Mr. Bentley. It's for the law department, whoever, whoever wants to expound on record. On the record, I can tell you, first of all, I never told you such a thing. You Thank didn't, you. but the law department did. That's why I said the law department. The way that usually works. Let, let me, uh, did you, Mr. Roberts, give her that specific <coughs> event? I don't recall those specific words now. Oh, hold on, Mr. President, before we go any further, before my time is up. Then let me tell you the source of where I got it from. Originally, yeah. it was Justice Cook that when we decided to do in terms of a facilitator, of our funds, we were instructed, and Mr. Roberts was instructed as a part of that, that if the council decides to use this facilitator, whatever that was, i.e. for me, Rev Birmingham, you had to then list whatever amount you were appropriating based on whatever the council approved in terms of your event or program. And you couldn't go outside of that, and the council had to vote on it as the contract stood to form. You couldn't go outside of that. So I'm telling you, that came from Justice Cook. I, I, I completely understand what I believe to be your confusion. <laughs> and, and that simply, that advice was about spending on that particular contract with that facilitator. That, that's different. No, sir. In fact, I can get you a copy of the contract because I keep copies of my contracts. And I'm telling you, we had to take an outline, and I'm not trying to put Mr. Roberts on the spot, okay? So what I'm, I'm telling you, I can provide you with a copy of the contract right now. And that contract specifically delineates what program, how much you're putting to that specific program, and we have been told by the law department i.e. through Justice Cook, and even Mr. Roberts has followed suit because that's what he told him to do, which was you couldn't go outside of what you have already appropriated for that particular project. And I'm not the only one that's been told that because I know Councilor Hort has been told the same because we've both been having the same issue. Well, let's just see if we can get, is that the case or is it not the case? I, I think that the no, we'll get a constitutional answer. bar that underlies your complaint says that you can't add to a contract. 
that you can't add extra compensation to a contract. Okay. I, I, it seems a hard concept to understand, but we're talking about barring the additional compensation to a contract already passed for a certain amount of compensation. So if what you're saying, not, oh, hold on, we're talking apples and oranges. <clears throat> but hold on, what you're saying is, Mr. Bentley, that we can't, if we approve a contract for 15000 we can't add any more money to that contract. We have to uh, vote on a new contract if we wanted to spend more money with, with that same for, for additional, additional services. Additional services. Okay. What Council Scales is, is referring to is, uh, and I see, I understand the confusion, is uh, a contract that was approved for uh, for services and which you call it a what? Uh, they call uh, them facilitator. Facilitator. And so if what she was instructed back then was that she couldn't spend any more money under that current contract, it had there would have to have been a new contract if we're going to go beyond the originally approved amount. Is that correct? No. Ms. President, I have a point of clarity. Here's what I'm trying to say, because I, I see how it can be confusing. In other words, what I'm saying is that when Rev Birmingham as a facilitator gets $50,000, what the law department told us is then you got to outline what those $50,000 per each program has an amount to it on the overall contract. So it wasn't like you said $50,000 go to Rev Birmingham. You said $50,000 to go for Black History Program, X number of dollars. Uh, X number of dollars go to X program. And then we were told you cannot go outside of what you have appropriated based on your program amount that you have told Rev Birmingham, i.e. by way of a contract, that you cannot spend over that for that specific project. <coughs> so I'm saying, but you're doing the same thing yourself today. It's the same principle. Because if you're saying that, no, no, if you're saying that you have gone outside of your Magic City Classic budget, and now you coming back and you saying, we want to pay for some advertising associated with Magic City Classic. It's an amendment. It don't matter how you look at it. The, the, the bar is to contracts, not to budgets. Right. I was told by Mr. President, as a point of clarity, I was told by Justice Cook and the law department that we could not go outside of whatever that budget that we gave as a line item for Rev Birmingham out of the $50,000, if you put $10,000 aside for the Black History Program, you cannot spend $10,001 over that particular amount. If you did, you have to go back and have another contract, and the council would have to then re-vote on it again. For the $1. For the one dollar over, you cannot go one dollar over. What? And so, if you have out of the fifty thousand dollars, Mr. President, if you had forty thousand dollars left, you couldn't get one dollar out of the forty thousand dollars to make up whatever overage if you spend over that amount. Well, otherwise, we, you wouldn't be in compliance with the contract. Well, now that's what say, was told to but, me. But let me just say this, Council Scales. We've been up here a while on the council. Um, and we've seen a lot of things come before us that are inconsistent with uh, what, you know, they, they change from week to week depending on whatever, who's all in their feelings on that particular week. So let me just say this. What we need to do is stick a pin in this particular item. Uh, we can vote, move on, and approve it. And when that same situation comes back up with you and this particular, uh, you know, whatever it's 50000 or or 100 or whatever it is, we just draw back to, we point back to this day, at this time, and say, this is how we're able to do it, and we just move on with it. So we don't have to go back and forth with them because you're not going to get the answer that you're looking for. We just know how it's being done right now. That's all I'm saying. You're not, it, so well, it doesn't. I agree with you, Ms. President. So can, can we have whatever, whatever that state law that they, they were reciting that goes along with this, that gives them the authority to do that. I'm gonna support this item today, but Mr. President, I'd like to have that. Uh, they can tell it to me verbally or whatever. I'd like to get a copy of it to go along with it, Mr. President. Okay. Well, Council Hoyt. I wanna be in yeah. compliance. Well, I think we can clear this up because it seems to me that 
the administration is not doing anything that the council is not doing. And if, you know, if we establish continuity in terms of scopes of work, of what is required, then it seems to me that um, what is placed in the contract is, is a matter of academics and continuity, okay? If it works for the administration, it ought to work for the council. <coughs> <laughs> really one, one body, separate responsibility, but one body will be working on behalf of the city. I, I think what we need, um, Council Scales, is a copy of the contract that we had with Summit Media, and then let that be a model yeah. for what we do for media. Okay? And any other uh, organization that we... Uh, we hire in terms of consultant or whatever and, and, and do it that way. Because what is happening is, you know, depending on what week it is, um, what, you know, what day of the week, uh, things seem to be changing. And so I think it needs to be some consistency because I'm telling you it's not, it's not working. We should be spending time on, on, uh, on these things because it ought to be, you know, we haven't done enough of these now with all them degrees y'all got in, in in the law department. Somebody ought to have been able to figure this out by now. I mean, it's, I mean, because it just continues to change and some folk don't have any trouble at all getting their stuff through. And some of the stuff we're doing on a yearly basis, you know, we're doing it. And so why is it that certain things come through, some don't. So let's get a copy of that contract. And so we establish some, some uniformity and maybe, um, yeah. well, <clears throat> if I'm almost sure it's a contract. If they if paying this money, well, yeah. we, well, then we need to delay it until we get, a, get, get the contract so we can establish a consistency. And Mr. President, and I would ask that uh, we take it up in the, uh, committed to hold so that we can establish and and that way whether it's the mayor whether it's uh, miss uh, miss april or whether it's council scales you know anybody this this is what we do this is how we write it up so we can get it done okay yes sir There is a bar in the Constitution that says that you cannot add extra compensation to an approved contract. There is a bar in the Mayor Council Act that says that you cannot overspend a budget. Okay. Oh, we no, do that all the time. No, because we we amend budgets all the time. Right. And. and I don't know whether that's something that's readily forgotten, but the council does that weekly. They change the budget so that they won't run afoul of, of that bar in the mayor mm -hmm. council act. We're, so, we so in the law department aren't confused about it. We'll <coughs> happily try to explain it, but uh, I think you're gonna have to come in with an open mind uh, a mind that doesn't assume that people who want to help aren't being hostile to you. Mr. President. Mr. Council, President. what are you doing? Well, I'm, I think, Mr. Thomas, that it seems to me that we're not talking about something different. All I'm saying is whatever we do, whatever rules we uh, we uh, act by or we enable, then it ought to be the same rules for e everything, and particularly if it's the same kind of um, a project or the same kind of, you know, if it's media, if it's a, a consultant, whatever it is, that language ought to be consistent and so that we don't have stuff sitting over there um, in the law department uh, and then Chaz telling us one thing, 
because somebody holding it up or they hadn't gotten to it or whatever. And what I'm saying, if you establish the rule and this is what the contract needs to look like, then he can prepare it in that manner. And so there's no confusion. But, but what happens is, depending on what day it is, that tends to change. I know because I've had the same kind of experience. Maybe not as much as uh, council scales, but I've had it. And so I'm saying this, we're doing the same <coughs> stuff. Now, when I met with uh, Mr. Roberts and, 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 the, um, and Justice Cook um, and what have you, uh, he seemed to be, he was saying the same stuff I was saying, but you know, Mr. Rob was saying diff something different. He said, well, just go ahead and do it. You know, so we established and Miss Kidd was in that meeting. You know, and so we established that. Um, and, I'm, and I believe as, as a model, whatever, and we just get it done. But, you know, but we don't need to be, I, this, is, this is a waste of my time and a waste of this council time that every so often we, you know, we have these inconsistencies that, uh, you know, that impedes the, the council's ability to do what it needs to do. And I don't think this is any different. <coughs> uh, so whatever the contract you all did with Summit uh, Media, then we need to be consistent in that. So if we have, if, and, and matter of fact, I was told if you target a specific group of folk that you couldn't use city money for that. Now that, you know, and, and this morning you say, well, if you target a specific group of folk that you can, that's what you just said. You interpreted that. that that's what you said. Now, I was told that we couldn't do that. You know, if you want to reach the youth, you couldn't do it. It's got to be for the whole city of Birmingham, right? Which has many demographics, many, many dy dynamics. And so all I'm saying, uh, don't put the group down that you're trying to target. You say, I'm just trying to target Birmingham. That's all I'm saying. And I think if we do that, then the mayor going to be right, and we going to be right, and everybody else. You're shaking your head, but that's what, that's essentially, that's, now, that, if, if, now tell me, Mr. Roberts, am I lying? Because <laughs> I know what you said to me. Yeah, Mr. Roberts, do you have any? Yeah. No response. Yeah. Councilor Tyson? You forgot me, Mr. President. I think it's just a misunderstanding now. Y'all just, come on now. Oh. No, it ain't no misunderstanding. It no misunderstanding it's, 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 it's very real. Well, you know, they told me the same thing, but I don't want to argue now. Come on. That's not arguing. It's Council, not getting an understanding. I, I know skills, it, it ain't arguing. Just calm down. <laughs> now. Oh. Are you done, Council Tyson? Yeah. Council Scales for a second time. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Well, we've been called to be stewards of the city's money. And so if it means it sounds like an argument, whatever the case may be, I think that all of us should be in a position that we, if we're asked about why we spent one penny of the city's money, we should be held accountable to it. So my question being to the law department, yes, sir. And so my, my, my question to the law department, <coughs> Mr. President, is that if you're saying that it would be against the law or unlawful for us to spend outside of a budget that has already been appropriated, then would it be illegal for the council to vote and take this action today, which obviously this is outside of the original appropriated budget? Is that right or wrong? It's not a question of that. I would have to review the, the facts, Ms. Scales, because I, I think the fundamental problem between my interpretation and yours it's based on the facts. I don't think you have an argument with me about what the ap applicable law is, and I don't think I have one with you. I understand what the applicable law is, but the, the underlying facts, I would have to investigate. Well, then, Mr. President, being that, that being the case, then I would only say then I can't speak for the council. I'm gonna act accordingly then because uh, I know what has been told to me through the law department. I actually, Mr. President, don't believe that it is right that if you are allocated a certain amount that this council has to then go through that $150,000 anyway, and then you got to outline every program <coughs> you're going to do at the start of when you plan to do it through a facilitator. 
So with that having said, I'm just going to govern myself accordingly, but I can tell you this much, and folk can call it an argument, I don't care. If you're spending outside of what you originally had, but you're saying this council can't do the same thing, we get from week to week, whenever we come up with an in initiative or a program, ordinance, no matter what it is, is always we're being told from the law department, for the most part, what we cannot do. I'd love to see the day, uh, interim director, Mr. Bentley, when we get to a point that this council can get some advice from the law department that say you actually can do some things, because it's impeding our progress. Maybe others don't see it, but I, I do see it that way. We have a thousand rules when it comes down to us trying to do different things in our districts, but yet we always see some type of uh, uh, alteration of that same rule being applied when it comes down to the administration. It's not fair, Mr. President, Mr. I think President. it's wrong. Yeah, Council Boy, just take a second time. Yeah, well, um, let, let me ask the question. Um, so it, is this an amendment or this is the budget for this particular item? This is in addition to what was already approved from the set Majesty the Classic, he said that yeah. earlier. <coughs> okay. As I, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, Counselor, each, each department has a non-departmental amount that they appropriated, appropriate at the beginning of the year in marketing and promotion. They're allowed to use those funds how they want to use those funds. So we, we don't earmark those funds that way. So that's where these funds are coming from. So, th so we're allowed to spend money, additional money, on whatever we choose to do so. And each one of these is a separate contract, so it's not as if it's a, a, a add-on to an existing contract. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to promote the Christmas tree lighting, we do the, the contract for the Christmas tree lighting and so forth. Okay. Well, then, because there are, there are no attachments here. All right. They, they, I think so the only thing that we attach counselors were copies of the actual invoices. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we can go back and pull copies of the contracts uh, for, you know, okay. and give them to yeah, you. Yeah, it would help me to understand if, if okay. you know, if in fact, um, if, if that's uh, the route we're going, then it would need to say uh, what department <coughs> and, uh, and, and at what amount from that particular department that, that, did, that, uh, that did this. Okay, all of these are from the mayor's office, but we, like I said, we can pull a copy of those agreements for you. Okay. All right. All right, we're ready to vote. Voting is open. Can you see me stay up? Yeah. That vote should be up. And that item passes one no vote. Next item, Mr. Clerk, you want to take the uh, item 36 off the table? It was 36 and 37? It was 36. I don't think 37 was laid on the table. Huh? 30, yeah, oh, okay, 37 was on consent. Um, I just need a motion. You have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. All right. That, Mr. Burning or Mayor, Mayor, do you have someone that can speak to item 36? Hold on one second, Mr. President. Okay. Can you speak to item 36 and 37? Thank you. Item 36, Council, is that the one relating to cumulus? Yes. Okay, what was the question? Mr. Councilor Abbott? Yeah, um, well, my question was, this says that we're providing advertisement for $5,000 and it's the sole source of supply. And I just wanted to know what we were doing and why it was the sole source of supply. Is this the same reason that Mr. Nichols said, Nichols said that we're targeting certain audiences um, concerning certain events that only those audiences would be interested in? Uh, for the most part, Councilor, that is correct. And sometimes we have relationships with different uh, vendors that, that we sort of partner with, and they will be like a co-promotion. Okay, I remember that. You came to Committee of the Whole and talked about that one. I couldn't remember the cumulus name didn't ring a bell, but I remember it now. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're ready to vote. Okay, uh, Mr. Is this, this is not for 36 and 37, is it? This is just item 36. Okay, we didn't do anything consent. with 37, Mr. President. 
We didn't do anything with Thursday. It was on. Yeah, it was on consent. No, it wasn't on consent. No, it wasn't. Okay. Because I got right. a question about it. All right. Go ahead. We're ready to vote. Did you have a question about this? No, I was 37. Okay. We're ready to vote on item 36. Can you Two give comments. me a, a, who to move in a second? Letha. It was Parker and Abbott. Okay, thank you. I do have a question, Ms. President. On 36, so what, what was the advertisement for? What was this advertisement for? Cumulus. Just a second, Councillor. Cumulus was to promote the uh, Birmingham Bowl activities. That's right. Uh, it was during the time that we were uh, waiting for the announcement, so they were promoting the hype to b before they awarded us the game between Auburn and uh, whoever that other team was. I can't remember right now. <laughs> Memphis. Okay, so okay. okay, so then let me ask you this, uh, Mr. Bernie. So this five thousand dollars obviously is in addition to whatever promoting dollars that were allocated for this particular. Uh, program, right? Yeah, Council, I'm not sure if there was, if, if I remember correctly, there was no budget for promoting the Birmingham Bowl. This actually came out of our coffers to try to promote the hype for the game. Okay, so then my question would be, and just educate me, since this is $5,000, which is under $10,000, why is it before the Council then? Because as Ron had said earlier, it's considered more of a professional services and it doesn't really clearly fall under the bid law because what you're trying to do with that is if you were, say for instance, if you wanted to promote um, an event uh, and you, if you did it by the lowest bid, the lowest bid may not reach the market that you're intended to reach and the reason we promote and advertise is to try to reach a broader market so to increase the economic impact of the entire game. So. That's why it falls under the professional service. And because we had exceeded the $10,000 well, $10, per 3-1-7 ordinance, we had to come forward at this time to get that uh, get that. Uh, so approved. obviously we, we had spent, and I know we did, so out of the $300,000 that, that the council appropriated to the Birmingham Bowl, it didn't include this marketing money at all that does not we don't we don't budget anything for marketing for the game that's basically to host the game as, as part of the sanctioning fee per contract usually when you have an, an event mr bernie how you plan to market that event is always included in your budget but i understand thank you mr president all right all right we're ready to vote voting should be open That vote should be up. That item passes one abstention. Next item should be 37. Okay. Uh, motion on that. Same. Was um, Parker F? Yes. Okay. You didn't read it, though. I, I didn't get a chance. I think we just tabled both of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 37, a resolution approving payment to Jeremy Kemp doing business as outdoor event specialties, LLC. On the honor in Alabama, in the amount of $3,865 to provide barricades for the City Fest and Birmingham Bowl pursuant to Section 11 40 1. And Section 11 40 19, Code of Alabama 1975, in accordance with Section 3 1 7 of the Birmingham City Code, this being the sole source of supply. We have a mover in a second. Louis Ivan. Second. All right. Roberson Abbott. Have any council scales? Thank you, Mr. President. My question in regard to this being that this is uh, City Fest, as I recall, the council didn't approve the $100,000 for funding uh, for this event, and so now we're paying for barricades, although the council didn't support the sponsorship of the event. And I'm just interested in knowing how did we arrive at that? Because this, even though it says City Fest, is not a city sponsored event. Councilor, please repeat that question. Sure. I'm saying that the council did not approve. There are some things that I marked to my memory. Mm -hmm. And so the council was asked to um, approve $100,000 for City Fest, which occurred in August 2015. The council 
uh, didn't support it. As a result, it was withdrawn from the agenda. With that said, I'm asking, so why are we now coming back paying 3000 or asked to be considered to pay $3,865 for barricades for an event that the council was not supporting? And so therefore, it's not a city-sponsored event. So are we now paying for barricade for private events? Because I'd like to know. I'm going to stick all of this in a nice little file, and I'm saying it where the public can know. Because every time we get around here and deviate from rules, I'm going to start going public with every time, and I'm going to have it in writing because it's not right. So this is considered a private event. Jack Schaefer was the promoter of the event, and he made sure everybody knew about it. And I like Jack, but nevertheless, when you put yourself out front, it is what it is. So are we now into promoting private events or providing for support for private events in the city, being that the city council authorizes agreements. And we did not authorize this, so it wasn't a city-sponsored event. Why are we paying for barricades? Councilor, I would have to go back and verify this, but I, my mind tells me that when the council approved the budget, I think it was sometime after the event had no, occurred. No, we didn't approve this at all. Uh, I, again, I'll have to verify that, but I'm thinking that the the hundred thousand dollars was approved in the budget, but it was after the event. Uh, and no, it was taken out of the budget. Was that now? It was taken out of the budget. Okay, uh, and, uh, and and besides that, you know, if the funding source is a problem, if it was not in the budget, then uh, uh, naturally we would absorb that in uh, in the mayor's office budget because it was an event that was supported by the city. That's why, Mr. President. So here's what I'm trying to articulate, Mr. Bernie. It couldn't have been a city-sponsored event because it was removed from the city's budget. When the budget was passed, this, uh, and Ms. Abbott, you should probably remember, you were chair of budget and finance at the time. This was removed from the, the, the overall budget. Ms. Barnett can help you out. So it wasn't in the budget. It was originally proposed to be in the budget, but it was removed from the budget. And when it was brought to the council for a vote, which was the latter week or last week or so in July, because the event was the first week in August, and the council, obviously because the support was not there, the administration withdrew it. So now we're coming back paying for barricades for an event that wasn't approved by the council? And again, Councilor, the mayor's office was in support of the event. Uh, I'll verify the budget uh, approval for you. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can get that information within a couple of minutes if you well, want to Mr. set President, this aside. Thank you, Mr. Bernie, because I do respect you. Mr. President, I'm going to end on this note to say this is a mayor and council that equals the city. So just because you have one branch of government that support a, a private event doesn't make it be the city event. And that's the reason why council members, I'm gonna leave that right there. That's why we get treated the way we do. So I'm gonna, yeah, Mr. President, I'm through with that. Mr. Bernie, I respect you. I'm telling you, Mr. President, it wasn't in the budget. It was removed from the budget and it was withdrawn from the agenda. And I'm still saying, why are we paying for barricades for a private event? And if this is what we're doing, then any other private event that would come after this event should be given not only the same consideration, but approval. That's all I'm saying, Ms. President. Councilor Abbott. Yeah, I just had two questions. Okay, this $5,000 is coming out of the mayor's budget, right? Uh, uh, yes, by a portion of it is, but if, if we 37? have to absorb the whole thing, we can, yes ma'am. It's 3,000, 3,800. Okay, the total I'm amount sorry, is 38, and we provided two funding sources. One of them is the line item in the budget, uh, and the other one was uh, coming out of uh, out of our budget because the 945 was actually not part of City Fest. That was for barricades for the uh, Birmingham Bowl. Okay, and the only other question I have, and I'm sorry I misspoke about the amount, but the uh, sole source of supply, is this really the only company in the yeah. city of Birmingham or the area that provides barricades for events? No, no, ma'am, that's an error, and that should be deleted. That that should not have been in there. So this was bid. So this one does. There are other companies that can provide barricades, yes. Okay. 
Thank you. So we're going to correct this so that people don't read it in 10 years and find out that it was a sole source of supply when it really wasn't. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Do you have any other speakers? Ready to vote? <coughs> Councilmember Hoyt, Abbott, Tyson. That vote should be up. That item passes, one no vote and one abstention. Next item. Should be item 40, item 40 and 49. 41 was on consent. Now I said 40 and 49. I'm Just sorry. Call them together so we can go on. <clears throat> is that a addendum? Or what is yeah. That? Item 40. We have copies of yeah. A yeah. resolution approving the following expense accounts. April Odom, Director of Communications, Mayor's Office, Baltimore, Maryland. $1,630.96, November 17th through November 18th, 2015, to attend Tech Higher Action Summit. April Odom, Director of Communications. Mayor's Office, Washington District of Columbia, seven hundred and seventy-five dollars and sixty-five cents, December the ninth through the twelfth, two thousand fifteen, to attend World Heritage Dinner and Lobbying Day. April Odom, Director of Communication, Mayor's Office, Washington District of Columbia, one thousand two hundred ninety-six dollars and forty-three cents, December the fifteenth through the seventeenth, two thousand and fifteen, to attend congressional meetings. April Odom, Director of Communications, Mayor's Office, Washington District of Columbia, three thousand one hundred eight dollars and five cents, January the nineteenth. Through the 23rd, 2016, to attend the United States Cong Conference of Mayors Winter Meeting. April Odom, Director of Communications, Mayor's Office, of Washington, District of Columbia, $1,118.95, January 31st through February the 1st, 2016, to attend congressional meetings. James Roberson, Council Pro Tem, City Council, of Washington, District of Columbia, $1,622.24, September the 16th through the 20th. 2015 to attend Congressional Black Caucus and item uh, 49. And, and 40, 46 as well. Item 46, a resolution approving the advanced expense accounts of city employees. And item 49, addendum item. Item 46, item 49, a resolution approving the following advanced expense accounts. Camilla Gray, committee assistant, city council, Atlanta, Georgia, $703.44. February the 17th through the 20th, 2016, to attend Environmental Protection Agency Group Meeting, Connie Horn, Records Management City Council, Atlanta, Georgia, $783.98, February the 16th through the 20th, 2016, to attend Environmental Protection Agency Group Meeting, Stephen Hoyt Council, City Council, Atlanta, Georgia, $788.02, February 17th through the 20th, 2016 to attend Environmental Protection Agency Group Meeting. Arenio Johnson, Administrative Assistant to the Mayor, Mayor's Office, Atlanta, Georgia, $703.44, February 17th through the 18th, 2019, environmental, to, to attend Environmental Protection Agency Group Meeting. Chaz Mitchell, Deputy Administrator, City Council, Atlanta, Georgia, $843.88, February 17th through the 20th, 2016 to attend Environmental Protection Agency Group meeting. William Parker, Councilor, City Council, Atlanta, Georgia, $1,279.48. February 16th through the 20th, 2016 to attend Environmental Protect Protection Agency Group meeting. Jose Perry, Committee Assistant, City Council, Atlanta, Georgia, $213. February 17th and the 18th, 2016 to attend Environmental Protection Agency Group meeting. Brittany Sharp, Director of Public Information City Council, Atlanta, Georgia, $843.88, February 17th through the 20th, 2016, to attend Environmental Protection Agency Group meeting. Second. Parker Roberson, ready to vote, Ms. Clark, on those items. Voting should be open. That vote should be up. Item passes one, no vote. Next item, Mr. Clerk, should be item 48. 48. Item 48, a resolution, I'm sorry, receiving the emergency purchase notice from the purchase agent relative to professional engineering support services at Eastern Area Landfill. 
All right. Um, we have uh, we have no speakers. We're ready for older new business. Council Scales. Thank you, Ms. President. As always, I want to thank the citizens of District 1, as well as the City of Birmingham, for affording me the opportunity to be their voice. We do have one neighborhood meeting that will take place on tonight. That is Sun Valley. <coughs> they meet over at East Pinson Valley Recreation Center. And I did want to say this because I was absent, uh, Mr. Mayor, from uh, your mother's funeral. And that was only because I was away at school. But nevertheless, I want to share my condolences uh, with you and I share with my council members uh, in supporting you during this time. So I wanted to make sure I said that. Also, we have uh, uh, two items that I'd like for uh, the, and I'm looking for it now, Mr. President, um, for um, the Public Works Department uh, to consider, and that is trash that has not been picked up in the 1900 block of 11th Place Northwest, which is in the Echo Highlands community. Also, we have illegal dumping that has been uh, sent over as well on the following roads, which is Carson Road, 6th Street Northwest, Lawson Road, leading up to Highway 79. There's some more that I'm, I'm going to uh, add to that, but nevertheless, that's all that we do have for today. I do want to invite everyone that is interested and uh, learning more about city policies and the way we do things uh, to come to the uh, Governmental Affairs Committee, or you can view it by live stream if you're looking now. If you're in the audience, I invite you to come. That'll be this upcoming Monday, uh, February 22nd, 2 o'clock, in conference rooms D and E. I also want to uh, uh, ask for a resolution of sympathy for Coach Alan Plump, who was the coach one of the coaches and teachers over at Huffman High School, and I so move. Second. Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Move the item. Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Thank Mr. You Thank you, sir. Mr. Plump passed on yesterday. Our prayers, obviously, is with uh, his wife and his children and mm -hmm. all of our Huffman Viking family members over there. We love Coach Plump. And so I just wanted to make sure that we did take the time to do that. Just a little FYI, I remember years ago that uh, my father had Prince in Birmingham. I was a little lad as a teenager, but I'm sure some of you all know that he had a protege and she passed on yesterday as well. Uh, her name is, her legal name is Denise Matthews, uh, but she goes by the name Vanity. So just kind of a little FYI, I'm not gonna do a resolution in that regard, but some people know uh, she only had the opportunity to come to Birmingham once, uh, and so he had the opportunity to be able to do that. So that's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. Councilor Hoyt. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just wanted to announce that the Green Acres Neighborhood Association will meet this Thursday, actually this Tuesday. Um, this is an old message. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> they meet tonight. Um, at the Lipton Christ Worship Center. That's at 6.30, that's the Green Acres Neighborhood Association meeting. And the next Public Safety Community, uh, Transportation Communication Committee will meet on uh, March the 7th at 4.30 uh, on Monday uh, at City Hall. Council, I, I would only make this observation <clears throat> because I've sat on uh, other committees, but I don't think in the history and, and you know, I'm just mentioning this. Um, we've had committees meet at the same time. And so um, I'm just wondering uh, why we have two committees meeting at the same time. What are those committees? And that's uh, planning and zoning. And we have transportation, safety, and communication meeting at the same time, and I sit on the other committee. Rafferty must have set that up. Yeah, <clears throat> but anyway, I just want to make that observation. It, you don't have to change it, but I don't think we've had that, that kind of uh, situation since I've been on, on the council meeting. But, you know, obviously we hadn't gotten over certain things, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. But I just want to make mention of that. Um, seemed to me that's by design. 
nevertheless, then what I would do is simply, um, you know, and I guess uh, some folks say, well, you didn't come as often. Perhaps not, but uh, but at least I had the choice. Yeah, but in this case, I don't have a choice because it's held at the same time. And I think I changed my meeting before anybody changed theirs with respect to the new assignments. But uh, nevertheless, if, you know, if we can have a discussion on that, I don't know. But if she doesn't, it's fine with me. Have you talked to her? Well, I talked to her yesterday, and, I, and this, this happened more than once. So I'm thinking it was just, uh, you know, it was just a mistake or whatever. But obviously, that's what she set it up to be. I don't know. But it's always the same time as the other committee. And uh, we've not had that kind of conflict uh, here before. But, you know, new occasions teach new duties. And so I'm all well with that. Uh, I did want to say, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, beautiful service for your mother, awesome service, and um, and I just I, I thank God for um, for the experience. Um, didn't know her, but I get a sense uh, who she was. Um, I told Michael that um, you know I, I had deja vu because my mother was a great cook. You know, so it was like a revolving door, and it seems to me that's what was happening uh, at the Bell home. So, um, uh, but we thank God for those persons like your mother, like my mother, who uh, just, you know, all about the community and about, you know, and empowering folk. So, um, as a fellow told me, he said, Hoyt, he said, uh, at my mother's funeral, he said, Hoyt, I don't mean no, no harm. He said, but that's the best funeral I've ever been to. <laughs> and so I just want you to know, it was one of the best funerals I ever went to uh, because it was just so spirited and so uplifting. And, um, and I just thank God I was there to witness it. And I want to say what a yeoman's job that our counselor did um, representing the council at your mother's funeral. She did an <laughs> outstanding job. And so we just want you to know that. But, um, but thank you for allowing me to come and, and participate because uh, uh, it was great. Great, great homecoming. So bless you. All right. And we still praying for you and your family. All right. Council Parker. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there were a couple of names that were left off on the um, the uh, travel items, and so I just try to move those on unanimous consent. Uh, one was Greg Jones, uh, $114 to attend the uh, EPA meetings in Atlanta. Also, uh, Jay Robeson, $320.50, and Jonathan Austin, $320.50. So I'd like to move those unanimous consent. Ms. Abbott, it was a mistake. I'm sorry. Second. It's always a mistake. Oh, no, I'm sorry. All in favor, sorry. let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Move the item. Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, and also, just one announcement, uh, Mr. Jenkins has the men appraisal be at Galilee Baptist Church on the 21st at 3 p.m. So I think Mr. Jenkins, he's left, but that's all. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Council Tyson. Thank you, President. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. Uh, we, we have February 22nd, Five Point South will be meeting at Southside Library. Woodland Park will be meeting on the 22nd at 4 p.m. at West Center Street. Um, we have a big celebration in District 6. The demolition of Lockway Gardens, Wednesday the 17th at 9 a.m. Everyone, we're asking for you to come out, and we are just excited about it. The whole Woodland Avenue uh, have been talking about it, and I actually uh, may had an opportunity to go over there and to see the guys uh, removing the asbestos, and it, like, and I took, it, I had, I picked up three children just to take them over there. It, it scared them children to death. They had them no white suits, and they didn't know, it, they didn't know exactly what it was. And one of them was coming out from around the building. It actually startled me, and they all had on their white suits, and they was re removing the asbestos uh, in the, in that area. But I was just, I'm so excited about this. Also, we are having an event on the 18th where um, the State of Black Colleges uh, will be hosted at uh, Parker High School from 12 to 2.30. We have 
Um, Kenny Glasgow will be actually coming in. Uh, that's Al Shopping's brother. He will be coming in from Tops. Also, we will have Carly Rigg from Hip Hop Atlanta. She will be coming in as a special guest. And we are busing in the <coughs> children from the local schools. We have six major uh, D1 colleges that will be coming to Parker, setting up tables, actually filling out applications and, um, and taking resumes and everything in order to enter the college. They're going to have uh, some special scholarships available uh, for the students that's interested in uh, coming to their uh, schools. Uh, Dr. Perry Ward will also be there, and Congresswoman Sewell will be one of the speakers also, will also uh, be attending this event. And I'm just very excited about this event. We have had an opportunity for a lot of good things to come to the high schools. And I think it's an opportunity for the, uh, the young people to actually see people that they prob I probably would never get an opportunity to see half of these people that's coming in because I have no access to them. But it's partnerships with different organizations all over the world coming together and taking notice and wanting to come into Birmingham. They could pick any other state. It do not have to be, it don't have to be in Birmingham. There's just a point where if you ask, you don't know what you will receive. And just for us to just ask them to come, and then they say, and it's okay. And Mary, I would just love if you could just be there and just uh, uh, bring a, a welcome, because they're going to have the, um, uh, actually the production crew will actually be there from, from Hip Hop Atlanta will actually be coming in also. Thank you. Council Lady, uh, Council Lady, I want to personally thank you for your remarks that you made during my mother's home going service. Uh, as you know, she loved you, um, and you all had a lot of time and talk together. And I think it helped to show people who my mother was. And we wanted to catch, capture the essence of her spirit to share it with everyone who came. And you did an excellent job in doing that. So I want to publicly thank you uh, for carrying out that mission on behalf of my mother. Thank you. But it was an honor for you to ask me. I really thought I was just like on the lower grade, and I thought maybe Congresswoman Sewell or the governor should have spoke really for real. And, and, and just knowing your mom growing up, I'll never forget my mom died. At, I was uh, maybe 12 or 13. I was young. And your mother heard about my mom dying. And she actually came around there. They was in the Eastern Stars. My Aunt Alberta was in the Eastern Stars. And I was, you know, really upset. And I said, well, I don't have nobody. But she um, was able to comfort me at the age, at that young age. And there was a bunch of children around my house. And, and she stayed for like three hours <laughs> around all of us. And she actually, when then she went and got a big bag at the car, and she had enough stuff for everybody. Yep. <laughs> that was our, because the whole softball team was over there, but she had enough for everyone. And I could never understand how did she know every time we came by that house, I don't know whether she just kept it stored somewhere, she had something for each one of us when we passed by that house. We and hadn't it, figured that out either. I just hadn't <laughs> figured it out. And I told you about, they used to call me Gladys Kravitz. And I really didn't, I, didn't, I was, uh, didn't really catch on because I, I knew Gladys Knight was in a group, but I knew they wouldn't call me Gladys. And, but every time if I seen a car or, or, or two or three cars out in front of her house, or either Miss Cook house, I would, would knock on the door, everything all right? And that's, that's, they just, they thought I was about one of the nosiest young children for the beat. You know, the age that I was, I was always just, you know, concerned about the community. And they just gave me that nickname, and it stuck with me all the way. Uh, but folks don't call me that now. But they, it just really <laughs> stuck with me until I went off into the military. And when I came back from the military, uh, Patricia Alexander, uh, our children was small. They was, her uh, grandchildren was small, and they started calling me because they couldn't really say Sheila. They started calling me Sissy because they couldn't really pronounce my name real good. But I have so many loving memories of your mom and the things that she did, just, I'm talking about just for any and everyone, she just had something and just something good to say to everyone that would encourage you just to be with all you could be in, in your life. 
And I just thank you for lending her to the community. Thank you. Okay. And thank you to my department heads who came in, um, as well as city employees. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, Mr. Mayor, I did not know your mother, but after I attended her funeral, I felt like I knew her. And she just sounded like such a great lady. I can understand why people loved her so much, and I can understand <coughs> how you and your brother and, and your sister turned out the way you did, because she wouldn't have let you turn out any <laughs> other way. Uh, but uh, that was an uplifting funeral, and I'm not usually, you know, comfortable at funerals, but I felt like this one was one where I could be there and be happy instead of the usual feelings that I have at funerals. So I know that y'all are missing her, but it was uh, definitely a celebration. Thank you. Um, the Education Committee will meet on Tuesday, February 23rd at 2 p.m. in conference rooms D&E. <coughs> I wanted to congratulate former representative Ben Erdrich and David Councilman, former Councilman David Herring for being honored for their work on behalf of historic preservation in the city of Birmingham. They were honored on Sunday afternoon. I was honored too, but they just trumped something up for me. And those gentlemen actually had done something important. Um, this evening, the TED Prize winner will be announced with President Ray Watts. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. The um, I understand there's a dinner with Congressman Sewell tonight. Unfortunately, due to the late notice, I won't be there, but I'm hoping my colleagues who can attend will tell me what's said. Um, February 21st, which is this Wednesday, begins the uh, pastoral installation of Elder Michael Bender and First Lady Betty Bender of Faith Apostolic Church. I think they're going to have like a four-day installation. <laughs> so if you miss one day, you can make another one. Uh, on February 22nd, the, uh, there will be a, a reception honoring Congressman John Lewis at the region's uh, auditorium. So this is a week with a lot of really important meetings and people in town. The neighborhood meetings that are coming up this coming Monday, Five Points South and Crestwood South will meet. And this coming Tuesday, uh, Redmont Park will meet. And, uh, you know, I wanted to say something about the library board appointments because, you know, we pay a lot of lip service on this council to respecting the committee process. You know, if people had applied for these positions, they would have been considered. But people clearly did not apply, but obviously wanted to be on the library board. And there will be more appointments upcoming, and I'm sure that we can fill, fit everyone in who wants to be on the board within reason. But, um, you know, the people, I noticed the date on one of these letters is dated, you know, well, it's dated as if we received it, but it was never provided to us. So I just want to say, either respect the darn committee process or just be quiet because I am tired of hearing people say how much they want the committees respected and then they don't respect them. And that's all I have to say and I don't really need a response because it'll just be more talk. And I'm tired of talk. Councilor Lundy. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, economic Development Budget and Finance Meeting will be Monday, February 22nd at 4 p.m. Please submit all items for the agenda by Wednesday the 17th to Jose Perry. Uh, noon tomorrow, all items into Jose Perry by noon tomorrow for Monday's 4 p.m. meeting. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Reverend Eric Hall, uh, who is Executive Director for Peace Baptist, uh, Missionary Baptist Churches, uh, nonprofit, their CDC. He's being um, awarded tomorrow for a community service award at the AG Gaston Conference, uh, and that'll take place uh, at the BJCC from 11 to 1. Uh, those of you who know Eric in District 9, he uh, works hard in the field office uh, for District 9 as well as for his church. 
and he is really a hands-on uh, servant and very deserving of this community service award that he will receive on tomorrow. So hats off to you, preacher, and keep up the good work. That concludes my announcements, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And in the mayor's absence, uh, I continue prayers for the Bell family. Uh, I thought my colleague uh, from District 6, Councilor Tyson, did a great uh, job in um, sharing her personal story as it relates to her relationship with Ms. Little. Uh, and I hope the resolution that we received from this council will be uh, appreciated as the mayor expressed uh, earlier. Uh, we also, on this past Friday, uh, had a great event at Huffman High School. Uh, I want to thank Dr. John Lyons and the principal there, along with his staff, for the invitation to come uh, speak to the students uh, on their anti-bullying program. We have a brief video to share with you this morning. Good music can usually lead to good dialogue, and that was the goal for the anti-bullying program held at Huffman High School. Birmingham City Council Pro Tem Jay Roberson surprised the students with not just any old concert, but with a fun afternoon listening to tunes from Grammy-nominated R&B artist Alvin Garrett of Just a Few Cats and hip-hop trio DFM. Through their performances, the musicians delivered powerful messages on the dangers of bullying. So to get young people together within the school system and hearing a message about you know anti-bullying or ending violence definitely resonates amongst their, their peer group. And you know, I try and let the peers and young people lead this effort. Right now, we're experiencing war zones in our neighborhoods and communities throughout. And young people now need to know, hey, they need to stand up. During the assembly, the student organization known as PALS, which stands for Peer Advisory Leadership, helped to create an environment where students could relate to the many examples given from those who had faced and overcome similar challenges of bullying. Students were also charged by school administrators to look at ways that they can serve as role models both in their schools and in their communities. The kids have been going through a lot. They've seen a lot of violence take place on TV. There's a lot of bullying that go on every day. And sometimes the students need a different voice. So it was very instrumental that Councilman Robeson came out today and spoke to the kids and put it on their level where they can understand it. Students who attended the program said the information that was given was very beneficial and they hope that together they can stand up against the growing act of violence. I pray and hope that my peers um, did learn a valuable lesson that bullying is serious and that it needs to be stopped. It can cause many problems, very bad problems. Councilor Roberson echoed the students' call to end bullying, stating that it's time to get back to the real intention of getting an education. Young people now need to know, hey, they need to stand up. Uh, it's time to do some more positive things in our community. Let's get, let's get in the books. Let's do the right things. Let's get our education. I think that's what's most important. And uh, I just appreciate uh, Dr. Lyons and Huffman for the opportunity to come and be a part of the anti-bullying program today. For all the latest news and information, connect with our community or visit our website and subscribe to news updates. And thank you for uh, that video to the Public Information Office, Kiara Perry, and, and for being on site, uh, along with Brittany Sharp, with the uh, uh, narrative uh, for that actual presentation. And truly, I want to thank, uh, again, Huffman High School and Dr. John Lyons uh, for the invitation to come out and speak on the anti-bullying program to your pals um, group. Um, great uni unity breakfast on this past week at Winona High School. Mayor, I know you couldn't make it due to the uh, circumstances, but your wife was there along with uh, your son, and uh, it was truly a great uh, program with uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson and his pr uh, presentation to uh, the Winona community and throughout the uh, Southwest Birmingham area. Uh, kudos to uh, Principal Hope for her presentation, and uh, she's done this 13 years in a row, and it's truly been a great event for uh, the community. Uh, I want to congratulate the Winona Lady Dragons. Uh, they are now in the sub-regionals. They won last night over Parker uh, on last night, and uh, the ladies are now headed to Wallace Hansville uh, to play against Columbia High School on Saturday, February 20th at 6 o'clock in the regionals. So uh, good luck to them. And I cannot say that and say, not say about my, my, uh, my daughter's team. Uh, they advanced last night uh, by beating uh, Valley High School, and they'll play at Alabama State on Thursday morning. Uh, against Hillcrest Tuscaloosa in the regional. So congratulations to them also. 
And uh, Doug Ragland, who actually serves on our Birmingham Planning Commission, um, is actually, uh, his family is debuted on Family Feud. I don't know if you all seen that or not, uh, but the Ragland family is on Family Feud. Uh, I won't tell you how much they've won so far, but they won a good amount of money uh, with Mr. Harvey. And so tune in to the segments coming up, and you'll see Doug Ragland, uh, Dr. Ragland, his family representing well. I'd like to move for a, a congratulatory resolution for the 10th anniversary celebration for Reverend Jesse Young at Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Ch Church. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Move the item. Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, we'll be honoring, thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Reverend Young on his 10th anniversary on this Sunday at Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church at 11 o'clock. Uh, Garden Highlands will meet today. On Thursday, Hillman will meet in Germania Park. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Councilor Scales. Thank you, and I'm glad you brought that up, uh, uh, Council President Pro Tem, because the Raglans actually live in District 1. Uh, they aired actually yesterday uh, at 6 o'clock on WABM, which is 68, and also they'll air again um, on tonight at 6 o'clock. And so I have that on my Facebook page. And with that having said, Mr. President, I'd like to move for a uh, congratulatory resolution on the Raglan family's behalf. And I shall move. Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Move the item. Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. All right, thank that you, passes. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Birmingham, I appreciate you all. We got a lot of smart people here. Thank you. All right. Uh, Central City Neighborhood meets Tuesday, February 16th, which is tonight from 6 to 7, Central City uh, Library, Richard Arrington Junior Auditorium. Graymont meets tomorrow, the 17th, from 4.30 to 5.30, Birmingham Public Library, Smithfield. Southside meets Thursday, the 18th, from 6 to 7, at the Exchange Club Family Skills Center. Druid Hills meets Monday, the 27th, from 6.30 to 7.30, the St. James Missionary Baptist Church in Crestwood North meets Monday, the 22nd, from 6.30 to 7.30, at Girls, Inc. Councilor Tyson. You know, uh, I, I know I'm a freshman and I just got on the council, but I feel like on these boards we should have fair representation from all areas. The uh, library board have no one from District 6 on the board. I felt like that uh, the libraries that's in District 6, the heat was off, um, the air was off all of last year, and the heat was off in November. They, they hadn't got it fixed yet. So we need representation, not tomorrow, but we need it now. And it, it, it was up to, if I'm in a position to where I can get someone to represent District 6 on these boards, where there's no representation, I'm going to do everything I can and make sure District 6 is represented on the board. I don't care if it's a cleanup board. Uh, I'm going to make sure District 6 got somebody on them. Thank you. All right. Well, I want to thank Officer Lewis from downtown substation. And Officer Sampson from the East Precinct for providing our security today. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. This meeting is adjourned.